Burgers and dogs. Burgers and dogs. <laughs> what are we having for Christmas uh, dinner? Everywhere. Plate of hot dogs. <laughs> Hat bay, hey, best day of my life. Best Christmas ever. <laughs> Halloween's over. <laughs> Not bad for a fat guy. What's there your what's your password? Just wondering. Uh Jason Gilden 92. What about you? <laughs> hey, hold on. How do I how do I get into your Hulu? What what's the password? It's uh Chris Kiamatsu 68. <laughs> Witten 82. What's up? Like, I don't really want to say it's, it. It's uh, kind of personal to me. I don't really <laughs> want to say it. <laughs> Just say it, bro. Nah, it's okay. I don't. I don't really want to say it. It's dude. Come on. Fine. 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 It's uh, Witten's elbow arm sleeves. Uh, eighty-two nine. <laughs> nine. Hey, nine two eight two. Romo to Witten. <laughs> <laughs> These guys. Just say, just tell me your password, bro. I don't even care. I won't even remember it. Bratsky ninety. All right, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Can I get a spelling clear clarity on the uh, Bratsky? Makes it even worse. B R A. Come on, dude. Just look it up. <laughs> the shame. Uh, he's growing out his beard because he has to look exactly like a football coach because it's football season now. Just how it goes. Nice. He's growing out his beard because he just landed a deal to be the live action toilet paper guy from the uh, PNG Johnson toilet paper brand. God, I wish, dude. That really is like the my end goal. What What, what do you? What's the end goal? Like, what What do you want to do? I just want to be like the the toilet paper guy on a commercial. <laughs> Johnson here. <laughs> Jeez. Just, uh, just Johnson. I'm still so, I'm still so pissed. We haven't gotten like a Super Bowl commercial deal yet with <laughs> Johnson and Schmitty. Come on, morons! <laughs> this guy, I know it's so good. Big, <laughs> figure it out. Figure it out. TG ninety nine. Oh my god. TG ninety. It's the Warren Sap episode. <laughs> oh my god! It's the Brett Kiesel episode. 99 very powerful number you got to be good bro if you're gonna be 90 90 lineman you're that's the guy yeah but at the same time it's like it's either the guy or it's the kid that's like five two super round and can barely move 99. and coach ski coach ski's like hey, i'll just stick him a we'll just stick him a nose tackle he'll eat up space at least nose guard the dude that just like is holding up the laps you know Fat. everybody Behind Swatowski, he finishes first. Or we do it again. Dude, Come on, dude. He's crying. Name a more embarrassing thing for a fat guy. Not bad for a fat guy. When the whole, <laughs> when all the fat, fast kids on the team got to get behind the slow piece of shit, big guy, number ninety nine, pushing him in the back. Come on, dude. You got this. Come on. I was always like, Jesus Christ, we're really doing this to this kid. Yeah, we're hazing this kid while we get a break because we're going we're we're not even on a walking pace here. That break was big time. I was like, "Yes, we get to help the fat kid." <laughs> hey, yes, we get to help Kirk off. <laughs> <laughs> here we go. 99, we're dropping names inside clubhouse. Bro, the fat kid on your team <laughs> got to push him along. <laughs> why did coaches do that that me. makes no sense i think i started to do it a lot like we did it once and i was like dude we can get this break every day if we really milk it kirkhoff's gonna be crying on the last lap every time what if we all just get behind him every time we get a little break <laughs> <laughs> the whole squad team yeah, like coach unity yeah I guess you're probably right. Coaches probably just get off to that so much about like, look at them. They're rallying together. It's we before me. And you're like, actually, hey, we're family. This is we're this family. is the biggest me possible. We're family. <laughs> Dude, coaches at the end of practice is so funny, bro. What I do just to get a coach after practice compilation. Knee. I love doing those. Get on Dude. knee. Get Can on I knee. Hats off. 
hats. They like don't do. They like don't do that well anymore. I don't know. Maybe people get tired of them. I don't really know. Not but me. I lo- that's one of my. That's one of my favorite videos to do is just like make fun of those coaches and give those speeches. Because we should have been one. It's. I mean, that's just. Yeah, it's been our life. It is our life. It should be our life. You're so good at impersonating coaches after practice. You should like be one. <laughs> Do you ever think about like being a coach? I think about it every, every day, day, every day, day of my life. <laughs> Hats off, take a knee, Coach Ski. You got anything? He's on his phone. Uh, um, no, I'm good. <laughs> Me after practice every day, cathedral football practice. Coach P, you got good, anything? Let's get out. After three let's days, go, let's go. just stopped asking me. I was like, dude, come on. You got any tickies to push here? Yeah, we're pushing ticks. Austin, Texas, October 3rd. Can we talk? Can't wait. Heat. Get over here, Austin, Texas. Um, San Diego, November 7th. Uh, let's just push ticks for those two for now, and then we'll get into the rest later. All tickies right under here, and uh, or at BennyPolizzi.com. Come out, say what's up, take some pics, let's kiss. It's going to be a wild time. Um, yeah. Grab some merch. Dude, just just trust me on this one, Austin. It's going to be fun. Uh, yeah. yeah. Also, Clubhouse, just uh, up front. Hey, man, we're on YouTube every week. So if you're new here, every week we're on YouTube. These guys, Clubhouse. You can email us, teamtheseguys at gmail.com. We love having the comments on YouTube. We love the ratings. We love the reviews. We love, love, love the emails. Keep blowing up the email line. Right, right, right. Absolutely great, great stuff. And uh, so hit us up there, please. Hit that subscribe. I know I got to say it. Hit that subscribe. Hit the subscribe, right? Type 59, right, right? It's true, um, though. It's but true. You know, you got we're, to. Just, we're just all... We're all just trying to have this community here where it just keeps growing and and we all get together at the clubhouse and we watch the Brett Favre highlight that I sent to Ben on Twitter today. Definitely and, already um, watched it. You know, we drink foamy IPAs and we just have uh, a giggle fest, man. We just have a good old time. So send it to the friends. Do all those things for us. Appreciate you. Thank you. Not bad for a fat guy cake. <laughs> uh, Station, how about this? Hey, and in the comments. Foxes, 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 the bartender. Sorry. All right. I'll stop. <laughs> Hey, can I have another station now about this? Because <laughs> you're having two beers. Oh, station now about this? <laughs> oh, what Why is that so funny, dude? God damn it. Um, hey, he's wiping down the bar. Hey, he's wiping down the bar so hard. Stops. Station now about this. Hey, he throws a rag over his shoulder. <laughs> hey, you're with a girl. Station now about this? <laughs> I can't. <laughs> hey, and if you don't have anything to comment on the YouTube uh, <laughs> comments, just just name name a random uh, NFL player. <laughs> For real, I think that should just be all the comments ever. Like, why why are we why are we giving prompts to comment? You know what I mean? It should every comment under a podcast clip under a YouTube should just be like you know whatever. Jason Gildan, boom. Rashard Mendenhall. God, dude. When the Steelers got him, I was like, gonna yeah, die. The way he swung the ball. Yeah. Held it like a loaf of bread. Especially S- Super Bowl 45. Sick, um, sick college team, too. Mm. That whole squad in yeah. college on the game. You know what I'm talking about, Clubhouse. You know what I'm talking about. Nasty team. Juice Williams, Richard Mendenhall, linebacker Jay Lemon. 47. I think Aurelius Ben, too. Mm, maybe he was young. Yeah, because he came. Yeah, no, he was on that team. Because he came out in the same draft as Antonio Brown. But not Brandon Lloyd, right? Correct. Brandon, Brandon Lloyd was already like. Yeah, on the, on 49ers. the 49ers. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Brandon Lloyd, have I don't think I ever saw him caught up catch a ball with two hands. God damn, he was so sick. Him and Chris Chambers invented the one handed catch. I said it. Chris Chambers. Big hands ever. The early 2000s. The early 2000s. Brandon Lloyd with the 49ers with the black trim and the copper and gold. Go back to that. Stick. 49ers. Go back to that uh, look, dude. Go back to that look. I promise. Uh, I promise, bro. 
49ers back to that and then Dolphins back to like the navy blue drop shadow. You know what I'm talking about? Ooh, like I can't yeah, I get down with that. Ooh, god, there's something about it. Something about the dark trim. I don't know. Not a sports podcast though. Not a uniform podcast, not an aesthetic podcast. Okay. Um yeah, dude. Uh football though last weekend. I guarantee you didn't watch any of it, did you? Not one thing. But I, I mean I saw it all on the internet, so it's like, you know. But I, I'll probably never sit down and watch like a game again unless it's like the Super Bowl. But like I saw all the, all really? the stuff. Yeah. I saw this. Um, I saw this celebration and going back to last week, one of the questions that we got is like, what's going to be one of the things this year in college football, you know? And I saw it last night and it was after a touchdown by Florida state, which there wasn't very many because they're God awful, but not a sports podcast. So they scored and the dude kept doing this on his head. And then everybody kept coming up to him on the sideline doing this too. And I was like, is this a TikTok thing? Is this in a music video? What is it, bro? You know, because I guarantee like this Saturday, you're going to be watching Texas, Michigan, and Quinn Ewers is going to throw a touchdown, and the dude's going to be running through the end zone going like this. And you're going to, all right, I got to find out what the wind-up thing is. What the, it's either like the Mr. Clean, like I'm cleaning. It's a wind-up doll. Probably something way cooler than that, but I got to Oh, know. you still, you don't know? No. I thought you, I thought you knew and you were just. No, because that was the only time that I saw it, but it was, it had the feeling of something. It's like, oh, it's going to show up here. And then everybody is going to be doing that. Like, you remember, yeah. uh, I think it was like 2015 in the NFL when every time somebody would score, they would line up across from each other and they would run like tiptoe past each other. Do you remember that? I think. Yeah. But yeah, it's going to become a trend. It you became think? a big thing because I remember this is how messed up I am, but I remember I had seen it around the league and then I remember Marcus Wheaton scored a touchdown against the Broncos in like week 15 in Pittsburgh and he scored and he turned to Antonio Brown and they that's what they did. They like did the high step tiptoe past each other and I'm like, okay, this is it's 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 made its way here. Dude, now. can college football players like actually celebrate now? Is that like a, did they amend that rule or something? Because they're like dancing now. And I'm like, this is like the NFL. Yeah. yeah they they definitely they amended it? it or they just like absolutely don't enforce it at all. Because yeah, I remember when we were growing up, like college football was like, give the ball to the ref or they're throwing a flag on your ass. But now they can do stuff? Like, was there some, did we miss something? Because I was like, bro, they're doing actual dances in the end zone for a long time. Yeah. Travis Hunter did like a third of the thriller dance on Thursday night. I know. I was like, like okay. dude, that's a flag for <laughs> sure, right? But they didn't flag it. I was like, all right, it's a video game. Okay. I'm cool with it. <laughs> but like, they're good, dude. College yeah. players are going to take that so far. It's going to be insane. So I went to, uh, I was in a wedding over the weekend. And uh, guess what was there? Um, The Bulls. Pre-game intro theme song. <laughs> no, no. Um, I did pay homage to you though because we actually had to do like <laughs> one single entrances with yeah. the person you walked down the aisle dude, with. Dude, put more pressure on me. Put more oh, pressure dude, on so me. So it's like I'd rather do. Okay, it's happening. Forty-five minutes of stand-up comedy at a wedding than that. <laughs> it's like okay, it's happening. Here we go. And I said, you know what? Screw it. Because I was like, I said, you know what? I'm just gonna shake my ass. And you know the girl who I walked down the aisle with. We used to work with her. And so she's like, well, like, what should I do? And I was like, um, I said, you know what? We'll, we'll, we'll pour one out for BP here. I said, just I'll turn to you and just smack me across the face. And then I'll get into the ass shake. Like the, the smack into the face will turn you force into me it. and turn me into the ass shake. I'm telling. And you. I was like, so that you're not doing really anything. It gets kind of like a wow factor from people, whatever. And then we went up there. And she actually like laid it on me, man. Because she was like, "Well, do you want me to like fake it?" No. I was like, "No, nah, like give me a little contact. I'll sell it." But she fucking whack. Good. And I I sold it too, and it did feel pretty nice, honestly. I know. And uh, yeah, I heard a few ooh. 
from the crowd when she smacked me. Dude, and you, so I was like, there it is. If you can find a bridesmaid that'll really just knock the shit out of you. Perfect. It's a, it's a good default move. Smack me across the face and then we just walk down the aisle. Boom. Well, I think because I know that's your move. So I wanted to put my spin on it. So that's why I spun into the ass shaking. Oh, so good. I was like, what song? Pay homage to BP. I have someone's presence there. Oh, that's a good question. I don't even remember. Doesn't matter. It wasn't the Bulls. It wasn't. Damn. Yeah, I don't know. I couldn't tell you because it happened so fast. And it was kind of enclosed. Like, it wasn't like we had a lot of room to, like, walk across the dance floor and, like, walk through the entire reception hall. So I didn't have time to register it. It was like, you're up there. They're shooting you out. Bam, go. And then you're at the table and you're turning around. And I was, like, vice best man. You know, when you're not, like, uh, you're not the best man, but you're the next one closest you're on to deck. the room. Yeah. Yeah. So I was, like, in the hole. I was, like, vice best man. So right after me was... You know, the bride and groom pretty much are coming. Ooh. So. Yeah, dude, you definitely yeah. black out in that situation. You have no idea what's happening. Yeah, I couldn't remember the song at all. Um, and your ear was ringing from getting hit in the head, so. Did absolutely take my shirt and jacket off and only wear the vest at the wedding reception. <laughs> Tie on head? <laughs> no, the the groom the groom bandit. He said no tie on heads. What? I said all right. I Not said, even okay. for the joke. Come on. I said that's cool, but I did go. So it was crazy because the like where we ate dinner, where all the tables were, like like I said, it was a pretty confined space. So it was a nice night. So then afterwards, they just opened up the doors and put the DJ out there because there was a patio, and that's where the music and the dancing was. And so, bro sweaty sweaty old sweaty back how many sweaty backs 42 sweaty backs 42 old guys on the dance back floor with, 42 with sweaty backs with just a vest on <laughs> just the, the through the thickest material ever men's warehouse vest just sweat right through it oh yeah every men's warehouse yeah, tux, have- tux just just seeping with sweat dripping with sweat Still have no idea where the white dress shirt is. Dude, how, how many white dress shirts have I Saturday? lost? How many dr- white dress shirts have I lost in my life? 14? I'm, like, I'm just going to I'm just gonna go in there and like when I return my shit to men's warehouse and I'm just going to like, I'm just going to like toss the bag up there. Be like, Molero, this wedding party, see ya. And just run out. Because like, I don't know where the white shirt is. I don't want to have to explain to them like, hey, I lost your shirt. <laughs> They're just, what do these people want from me? That's an insane policy, anyways. Have what a, a scam men's warehouse and all these wedding things are. Yeah, have it back by eleven a.m. the day after the wedding, bro. Eight hours ago, I was blacked out, sweating my ass off with no shirt on. It's Not eleven a.m., dude. Return this, dude. The men's warehouse and crazy ho- in hotels. I'm like, can we, dude? Five p.m. is checkout for hotels. In 5 p.m. is when you get the dress shirt back. Pushing six. It's on a Sunday. I, you're like. I, dude, right? You're hung over as shit. There's so many other things that you're like. So oh, many dude, other things. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Wake up. Wake up in a cold sweat. We got to get to men's warehouse in 30 minutes. <laughs> what? Like, yeah, right, dude. I'm all about in life. Like, just listen. I'm all about the easiest path path of least resistance just like if i have to pay a late fee to l- eliminate a really annoying unnecessary hungover trip i'll pay the late fee <laughs> like i'm sorry men's warehouse but you're not getting that from me 8 hours after i lay my head on a pillow after this party that i was in like it's just not happening what is the deal with that I don't know. I hate the whole thing. And what's the late fee? Like a hundred dollars? Jesus Christ! I don't know. Like I, you really? Point, do you really, really need it back? You turn it around for tonight? Is that what's going on? Right. It's a total scam. And it's like, I would say next wedding that I'm in, but I don't know if I'm going to be in any more weddings. That's like the last one, really. I mean, there we go. I have some buddies who I have some buddies who aren't married yet. And I'm sure if they were to get married, but at the same time, we're at that weird point where it's like, 
my buddies may not get married until they're like 35. And then when you're 35, do you have like a six person wedding party? You probably just kind of like do it small. I'll be invited. That's cool. But like, who knows? But yeah. at that point, I'm like, listen, just make my gift instead of getting me like a fucking bag and a, a glass and an ice maker thing or whatever the hell it is. <laughs> dude. Like, dude, just make the gift. Just the suit. Make, make me not have to rent a tux do all the fittings, all the try on, pick it up, r- rent it for 200 bucks and then have to return it the next day or get charged more. Right. Just 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 make it be a suit that I can keep forever and it's mine. Please, God. That would be insane. The wedding gifts. Guy wedding gifts. <laughs> when am I ever going to use this this uh fucking axe that you gave me, bro? <laughs> Thanks for the axe with my name on it. Uh, what? <laughs> cool. I'll put it in my closet. <laughs> Thanks for this uh big thermos with my name on it. Let me throw it out the fucking window real quick. <laughs> oh God! Did you even did, did did I even cross your mind when you thought about this gift for me? A thermos, <laughs> bro. <laughs> Let me drop kick this to the nearest Goodwill real quick. <laughs> Listen, it's just that's what it's got to be. No, like I appreciate it. I know the gesture. I know. No, I know the gesture. OK. And like, I appreciate the gesture. I'm glad to be here for you. But like, just give me like a quick handwritten note and then make my gift not have to venture into a men's warehouse. And I'm good, brother. You don't got to give me anything else. It's it's honestly that would be perfect. Hey, just just do all my annoying shit for your big day, and uh, that's the gift. <laughs> the things I don't want to do. Uh, you know what? Think of the uh, walk down wedding reception entrance. I have to do. Think of that for me. Get the tux for me, and I'll be there. Shoes size really just- size twelve. Like that's just like, give me like I'll I'll send you the numbers. You take care of the bullshit. Yep. If I look just, bad, it's your fault because it probably is anyway. So like, yeah. Do just do not make me do not make me go in. And oh my! For so, for your wedding that I'm already going to, I gotta do this, bro. <laughs> Kill me. Thanks for the thermos, though, big dog. <laughs> Bartender set, dude. <laughs> oh, it has my name on it. This changes everything. Oh, uh, <laughs> so glad I caught you when I did to get you in mind. But <laughs> yeah, dude, that's not, that's a good <laughs> feeling though. You don't ever have to go to a wedding ever again. Oh no, I'm gonna have to go to them, but I don't like. I'm I'm nearing the end of the list of people I'm going to be in. You know, because mm. everybody who's everybody who I'd already be in is already married, and I've already been in them. Or the people who I would be in, like at, maybe when they're thirty-five, like uh, they, you know, they're not really in any rush. So, yeah, probably just get like a card or something. So I'm chilling. Great feeling, you know. He's done, chilling, folks. But uh, <clears throat> yeah, that was my uh, those that, that was my Labor Day weekend. I uh, I did that, and uh, I had uh, cherry bourbon. Cherry vanilla bourbon. Oh so man, I'm, 30, I'm 31. What's up? Yeah, <laughs> that's so 31. You only have that under 31 when it's like an accident or you steal it from somebody's like back patio. You're I don't know. Like we got this cherry vanilla booze. bourbon. You and four of your friends. Have any, like, does anybody have any code red? Oh. Anybody have any uh, big red that we can mix with this? Dude, doctor. Now I'm just like sitting there watching LSU fuck up on Sunday night, just on ice, just drinking it. Sounds perfect. And that's burpy boy. Oh, whoa. I love you. And that's what that's what happens. Um hey, I sent out a tweet last night. I said So long, dogs and burgers on the grill. Yeah. See you Memorial Day weekend. Yeah, our, you agree with that? Does anybody even buy a hot dog between now and Memorial Day? 
I've never even that's thought of the, one. At the cookout that I was at yesterday at my grandparents, I was like going around. Everybody was like, hey, say your goodbyes. Make your rounds. Stuff that one last dog down because it's over. See ya. This is not hot dog season anymore, you know? I mean, you have such an influx of them from Memorial from May until Labor Day weekend. You're like, okay, I'm ready to put these down in the cooler and then unleash them come next next three day weekend. I guess at like a football a football tailgate, you might have a hot dog, but like it's not. You're not excited about it. You're just like, all right, because there's nothing else. Right. That's that's different. I'm talking about like when the whole when you, you you're having a cookout or having a get together and the entire basis of the meal is around burgers and dogs those days are done it's over over. dude what if somebody handed you a hot dog on christmas i'd throw it at the wall (laughs) get out of my house dude hey merry christmas a hot dog with ketchup and mustard i'd take one bite and throw it like a grenade (laughs) i'd start to convulse man it is (laughs) just <laughs> start shaking everywhere. I know. My eyes would, would not, pop it out would of not my head. register with my brain. Not register <laughs> with my brain at all. A hot dog in a stocking? I'd be like, no! <laughs> <laughs> hey, one of those like connector ones that's like six feet long, just like the wieners that are tied to each other, all just stuffed in the stocking. <laughs> no! No! That'd be so weird. I, I don't think I've ever seen a hot dog in the month of December. I've never seen a hot dog in December ever. Don't want to. This does the not, only one. Not right. The only one you see is in like the basement uh, concession stand of a high school basketball game. They're just like spinning back there, and you're like, nah, still no, nobody's no, buying those. Just take the just take the nachos, please. I'll take a pretzel, a box of popcorn. <laughs> what are those? Four months I later, oh, I there. want a hot dog so fucking bad. I want to go to a baseball Give game just two. for a hot dog. Yeah, see, that's the time. Yeah, and I know people are going to disagree. Just like you said, uh, you ever heard of a football tailgate? You ever heard of a football tailgate? I'm like, yeah, at a football tailgate, I want fucking barbecue, BCD uh, ribs. I want buffalo chicken dip. I want wings. Hello, Joey, want wingy. Like now, you yeah, okay? Now you, you had your run, dogs and burgers. You had it. You, you you kept us company for three and a half, four months, okay? But now we turn it over to the wings, to the BCD, to the dips, to the chili, nachos, to the chili. chili. Chili season, anyone? It's coming quick. Hey, because just like when you're like, oh, dude, if I saw a hot dog on Christmas, kill me. If I saw a thing of chili in July. Cut my hands off. And my tongue. Happy 4th of July. Bowl of chili with crackers. You know, I I take the bowl and I pie you in the face with it. Ah, I deserve it. (laughs) Someone's mom. (laughs) It's time for that, folks. All right. And you know what? Sure. If I'm popped after going to the Colt Steelers game at the end of the month and I'm walking by a tailgate and somebody wants to offer me a dog wrapped in an aluminum foil. Yeah, I'm sure I'll down it. You but I don't gr- want to go to somebody's football watching party on a Sunday or Saturday and have them be like, yeah, we're having dogs and burgers. Like, I just did that for three months. <laughs> burgers and dogs. Burgers and dogs. <laughs> what are we having for Christmas dinner? Everywhere. Plate of hot dogs. <laughs> Hat, hey, hey, best day of my life. Best Christmas ever. <laughs> Halloween's over. <laughs> I did see it has been fucking me up. I did see a Kit Kat commercial that was straight up like I ain't want Kit Kats for Halloween because blah, blah, blah. like I saw that on live television on NBC this morning. It was crazy. I, I think I saw a Reese's one. No, I didn't. I haven't seen any Halloween shit, dude. My parents' neighbors across the street from them, they already have those two like giant eight foot tall skeletons from Target up in their yard. I think that's fine, right? Because it's like Halloween season. It's kind of, uh, yeah. See, I'm always just like, uh, 
there's a lot of people that are like September 1st, you can start getting with Halloween and November 1st, you can start getting down with Christmas. And I'm always like, I need just like a little bit of a, a leeway time. Like I needed it to be like September 15th for it to be like Halloween ish for me to feel comfortable with throwing on like nightmare before Christmas. And I needed to be like November 7th for me to start really like, all right, so not your Christmas. Like, I don't know. That's just me. I need because <clears throat> you're coming off Labor Day weekend and it's such a hard turn. Like it's still going to be like 88 degrees on Wednesday here. Like I can't da- get down with Halloween and spooky shit when it's fucking 88 degrees. I'm roasting mm-hmm. like a dog. I know, but I just love it so much, dude. I do too. But it's just like after Halloween, I still am kind of wanting to watch like Michael Myers on the f- November 1st. So it's hard for me to just flip right over because I'm still kind of in that mode. I need to let the Myers wash off me a little bit before I can get into Buble. I'm ready for it right now. I'm ready for it right now. It's just me. Hang the spider webs, bro, right now. Dude, the amount of insane DIY shit that's popping up on my Instagram that I will never do, but I want to do all of them for Halloween is insane. It's just nuts. Like what? I need to like report it so it stops showing up. But also, I love it. I want to keep watching it and send it to my wife. The way I just want to carve a pumpkin. Like, I would carve a pumpkin today. <clears throat> well, I saw a, a DIY pumpkin lights. So you go get a bunch of like the fake plastic pumpkins. You carve out faces in them. You put a little light in there that you can turn on with a remote. You hang them from your ceiling. And they be like they become like jack-o'-lanterns that are hanging from your ceiling as lights. I saw another one where it's you make like spider web brownies. Oh, you have a brownie, a sh- dude. Yeah, you're going to do this. I bet you, sh- you honestly should. This would be funny. I think it would do well on your TikTok. Not that I'm managing your shit. Oh, well, can you? Anyways, they have a, 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 a like a sheet pan of brownies. And then uh, the person was like, uh, they mu- they mash up. Uh, mash and heat up marshmallows to where they go from like the, the Malo cube to mm-hmm. like just be in like uh, whipped cream essentially. And then they uh, would like put it in their hands, rub it together and then like spread it across the brownies. So it looks like it's like cobwebs oh. going across your brownies, but it's marshmallows. I would take those out, dude. I'd be, I'd be taking rows out of that. I just don't uh, same, but I'm, it's just like, damn man, where do these people like, if I if I walk away from my son, he's yelling at my ass and wanting me to play choo choo trucks with him. Like, I know how are these people doing all this. Shit? I don't know it's either. Insane. It is insane. I'm like, damn, you just had all the like. Would you have a week to figure out that recipe? What? Exactly. But I mean, maybe that's what they do. They just make D. I I kind of hate DIY shit. I'm kind of like, I'll just buy. I'll just buy it made. I don't want to make anything, bro. The jack-o'-lantern lights? I'm like, that's sick, but, like, dude. You should just be able to buy those somewhere, (laughs) right? Like, you go into Hobby Lobby, (laughs) you should be able to, you know. (laughs) Shut the fuck (laughs) up. Me carving jack-o'-lantern lights on my floor for four days? Kill me. Halloween's over. Is it... Hey, that first day. Hey, God like? damn, we never talk about holidays. We should keep. We should keep talking about <laughs> it. I've, I don't think we ever have. On this episode of these guys, the Burpee Boys talk about holidays for the four hundredth ninety eighth time in a row. <laughs> what were you about to say though? That first day. Hey, that what? first day. You know, you're talking about how you need some time for the summer to chill out, Halloween to start. But that first day, we were like, oh, shit, it's about to be Halloween. When it's like, it's kind of cold, it's like a little rainy, you're like, today's the day. You all, There's always one day where you're like, oh, shit, this is it, bro. This is the first day of like, we're, get, we're about to get hyped for Halloween. It might be like, it might hit like five days before Halloween. It might be like 10 days before Halloween. It might be like three days before Halloween. But there's always a day where you're like, it's so Halloween right now. Like I just want to never fail thriller. Put thriller on repeat and yeah. monster mash. That's PSL. something we need to do. We got to get more on this year. Everybody is like, yeah, Christmas. Obviously, you have Christmas music and you have Christmas playlist and Christmas essentials. 
Burpee boy times three. These energy drinks are getting to me. You have, <laughs> you have those, and they have their place, and you look forward to them. We got to get in on the Halloween playlist. Thriller is always the best one. Kind of over that, honestly. Can something can something dethrone Thriller? Uh yeah. There's just not a lot. Of, there's, there's not a lot that you can do. There's more than you think, though, because there's so many movies about it. You know, there's so many shows and there's so many things. Yeah. Put Michael Myers theme on there. The Halloween theme. Listen to that all day. Not a Monster lot of mash. <laughs> Bang. Not a lot of songs with like words, though. It's all like just background, like suspense. That's cool. That's fine. Embrace it. Dude, my, my dad's whole I, like CD collection is just all like Halloween suspense. I swear to God. He has like four pages of like Halloween suspense music. <laughs> just flips it on. Get in, the, get in the right mood. Get to ooh, ooh. like every four seconds. It's like, ah, <laughs> and you're like, I thought I forgot the CD player was on. That's the shit right there, man. Yeah. Throw that shit on. Hey, somebody's watching me. Oof. That's Halloween. That that could. Man, that's a good song, bro. And it's kind of low key, too. Like, right. It's not really Halloween, but it is right. It's not overt Halloween, but you get it. Like if that came on, like in a summer playlist, you'd be like, we can keep this on. Just so much passion when Michael Jackson comes in on that. And I like, yeah, he's like not the main guy in the song. I'm like, what happened here? How did the song? How was this even made? I'll tell you exactly what happened. I saw the TikTok too. (laughs) I told you about this when we were doing espresso like six years ago. Oh, say it again. Don't give say me it again. TikTok. Say it again. The, yeah, the it was your dude, TikTok. <laughs> the dude who's the artist on that song, Rockwell, I believe. Sick his name. dad was a record producer uh, under Michael Jackson's label. You did tell me this. And he said, hey, as a favor, can you come and do this hook for my son's God. song? Because we know if we put you on it, it'll pretty much instantly be a hit and that's exactly what happened Bro, that, so michael jackson and his prime probably went in there and just fucking ripped i always feel like somebody's watching me probably did it one time i think so too and then he just looped it and that's all it took it's such a good song he crushed that <laughs> what's what are the best halloween songs now i gotta look it up they got playlists for it. You can throw Stranger Things in there now. Um, you can throw, which I know you've seen. One of the only shows you've seen. Disturbia. Okay. All right. Now I'm into it. Disturbia. Zombie. <clears throat> That's kind of it, though. Z- Zombie. Ghostbusters. A in- Nightmare on My Street by Will Print. <laughs> Will Prince. Will Smith. Enter Sandman made the list. Cool. Okay, Virginia Tech. Yeah, some of them are kind of stretches like Highway to Hell. Like, that's yeah, no, not, no way. Just because it says hell in it. Okay. <laughs> Can't claim that Halloween. Halloween can spooky, do it. scary skeletons. That kind of bangs. This is Halloween from Nightmare Before Christmas. Oh, dude, let's go. I love an old ass holiday song for some reason. If it's not like from the 1970s, I'm this like, uh, I'm Halloween. Good. This this Halloween, Halloween, Halloween. Oh, I can't wait to put my Michael Myers mask on. Just sit there Is it weird day. in LA? Is it weird in LA with like, because you can't really tell it's Halloween because it's all the same. You can't tell anything in LA. I'm like, it could the be same December, every it could day. be, yeah, it is, same exact day. I'm like, can it just rain? I haven't seen the rain in a year. But when it it's rains, it nice. rains for like two months. I'm like, oh, shit. okay. Yeah, then people start getting concerned. <laughs> I'm always like, yes, the rain. I can just like, you know, stay in bed all day. Then I'm like, I never do that. Every time it rains, oh my god, just throw on a movie and just like bundle up, never do it. But I always think still about not, 
<clears throat> I'm still not convinced you've ever slept. <laughs> Like you know how this is weird. Like you know how you can like picture people. Like you're like, oh yeah, they like they sleep like a normal. Like it just doesn't register for me at all. Like I think it's just like three fifteen in the morning, and you're still just like sitting like a cat working on your laptop somewhere. That's fine with me. That's great. <laughs> just perched up at a Panera three fifteen. How do you get in there? Three fifteen a.m. <laughs> yeah, I swear you, and my dad, never seen you sleep. Don't want to. <laughs> You never saw your dad, like, take a nap? Man, I think maybe, like, twice, and it was when he came down with, like, a really bad fever and was, like, actually sick. I think that's that's cool, bro. God damn, I saw my dad take so many naps. Dumbass face. (laughs) The lazy boy? Classic dad? Yeah, for sure. Football (laughs) game on? I was like, oh, my God, be more dad. No, man. My dad's got like two yellow legal pads out, like six highlighters, two pens. He's writing down God knows what. It's like 1145 at night. I'm like, what? What? Highlighters. Like, you know, when you'd be going on like family trips, you know, and you pull over halfway and you'd sit, you like stay in a hotel before you're going to whatever spot you were going to. So your whole family all had to like share the same room. You Crazy. Know, hotel. Yeah. Weird, right? But like my sister would be passed out. Both of them, my mom would be asleep for a while. I had just been like chilling, watching the end of the, you know, fucking Cubs game or whatever on TV. And then finally I'm like, all right. But then there's my dad, like 1145, just like sitting upright in the bed, jotting away, highlighting things <laughs> like, hey, hey. And then I wake up the next day. Still he's still it. like, he's still, he's already up or he's still just been up. Has a coffee. He's just in another location in the room doing the same thing. Uh, like, what is happening here, man? God, it just got it. like that to this day. Good. Still. Need more highlighter yeah. dads. Big highlighter dad. All right, let's uh, let's get the let's get the uh, let's get into the clubhouse here, the mailbox. Uh, team these guys at Gmail to get. Dead come, dead come. All right. <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, I saw this one pop up, and I'm, I'm really interested in it here. Uh, this is from Mary Alice, and the subject line is sibling bonding over these guys. No way. Hey, Clubhouse, I've been listening to the podcast for over a year, and in the last few months, I've got my brother to listen to it too. Now we have our weekly check-ins to discuss what's new in the Clubhouse. My brother and I have grown up in a family that bonds over sports, so some of our favorite members together are connected to those sporting events. Do either of you have a game that you experienced with a family member or friend that has bonded you in a weird way since then? Quick shout out to my brother for being my built-in best friend for random sports talk and crying together out of joy and pain over our Buffalo teams. Go Bills! Get a ball! Mary Alice. Well, that's awesome. Uh, Mary Alice, thanks for sharing that. Love to hear it. Hopefully, some clubhouse uh, talk over Labor Day coming up at Thanksgiving, the Thanksgiving table. I mean, they, Halloween's already over, so Thanksgiving's almost here. So, uh, have some of that chat going on. That's our best and, podcast, uh, by the way. These guys' best podcast is the Thanksgiving episode. Oh, that's hot a, take. That's a must listen for sure. It that's is, a must listen dude. It is every year on on your uh, way to your grandma's. These guys, <laughs> I uh, yeah. <laughs> Can't wait. Already excited. Um, Halloween's over. Part game four. That, game that you experience with a family member or friend that has bonded you in a weird way. Uh, well, I don't want to say like the obvious ones of like the Cubs winning the World Series or the Steelers winning the Super Bowl. So I'm trying to think of like some weird fucky shit that we just happened to like be there at the same game or something. Like you and your family? Or like, uh, what do you mean? Well, she said family member or friend. Oh, like us at the same game? Have we ever? No, no. Oh, just like okay. if you had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you have one where you're like, huh? And you keep going. You're like, but it's like a memory where you're like, oh, yeah, we like have that together. <laughs> um, Damn. I can remember for like four Sundays in a row and like 
2005, me and my sister would just sit in the same chair and she'd be like, hey, before we sat in the same chair, she'd be like, can we watch Priest Holmes? And we'd just sit in this uh, love seat and watch Chiefs Priest Holmes because they were always on. Four weeks yeah. in a row, we'd just be like, yeah. I'd just be like, yeah. We'd watch for like 15 minutes and then go do something else. <laughs> can we watch Priest Holmes? Yeah, for sure. Can't wait. Just Priest Holmes, too. Yeah, not the Chiefs. <laughs> just Priest, please. Priest. Give me think. priest or give me death, Father Holmes. Yeah, I, like I have a few. Like, I went to a weird like Colts games growing up because I had friends who had tickets. You know, like their family would have like season tickets, and sometimes I would get the invite. And I was like young enough to where like you know maybe the Steelers were on a buy or like I probably was just like ah, I'd rather go with my friends to the Colts game than and just like follow the Steelers game on the scoreboard then, you know? So like, I remember going to the 2008 Colts. Texans, Ravens Titans. Game. Oh, okay. Col- Colts Ravens game. And it was one of those weird, it was like October and they had the roof open, but it was like 92 degrees. Like it was just the hottest. And we we're just sitting directly in the sun in the I end zone. I cannot stand that, but yeah, sorry. And yeah, I remember like Marvin Harrison caught like two bombs and Joe Flacco was a rookie. It's with Anthony Milto. So that's a weird one that I have. Not that it really hits, but it's just like ones like that where, yeah, I'd be like, I guess I'll go to the Colts game. Sure. I remember I'd like be there. I'm like, I don't really give a shit. <laughs> that's the best game to go to when you don't care about. You're like, yeah, it's just kind of freeing. It's yeah, kind of freeing. You're just like, cool. <laughs> <clears throat> me and Ben are tied to uh we went to the national championship. Ben's oh, dad had an extra ticket. That for was me. actually that was actually a good, really good time. Cause I was like, how are we yeah. here right now? Dude, yeah, it was when Indy hosted the national title, Georgia, Alabama, a couple years ago. And yeah, Ben hit me up, I think like the day of, and was like, bro, I got an extra ticket if you can go tonight. I was like, holy shit, what a, like this is insane. And so, yeah, me and Ben made our way to Lucas Oil. We're drinking, had killer seats. We're drinking wine and like the club level seats. Everybody was yeah, like just 10 times more excited than they'd usually be. I was like, this is sick. Everybody, dude, dude you, we you kind of, it was so loud. You kind of couldn't even hear anyone. Like I, like every time you talked, I was like, what did he say? <laughs> like, dude, this is, this we were so sitting, loud. We were sitting like with a bunch of Georgia people. Oh, because Georgia had won the title in like 40 years. So it was like mainly Georgia folks. And you remember that dude who was fully dressed in a Georgia uniform, like had a helmet on. And I think he had a red lightsaber, too. <laughs> and you were like, how the hell did he get a fucking lightsaber in, in here? Oh. I always wonder that <laughs> when you like see somebody like on a like on a TV broadcast in the stands. And I'm like, how did they get that big ass sign in there? The D in the fence. I'm like, how do you get that in? Yeah, can yeah. you just bring that in? Any, You can have anything on a poster board and bring it in? Or do they like write it right, while you, they're you, in there? Well, if it, they do check, and if you have some bullshit, they won't let it in. Like if you have like, yeah, you know, some derogatory shit or shit that the stadium wouldn't approve of or whatever, they, they won't. But, who's, but yeah, I'm like, who's checking that? I remember, I remember Steelers Colts like 2011. My dad brought the video camera because he wanted to <sighs> dude, and they made him like they're like, you can't bring that in here. It's like, what do you mean? They're like, it's a camera, you know, for like copyright shit. He's like, I have a camera. We all have iPhones. How are they like, well, we haven't regulated, you know, being able to film on your phone, but like an actual video camera, you can't do it. So my dad had to like run back to the car, that bullshit, and put the video camera away. But yeah, like a lightsaber, like a fucking weapon. They're like, yeah, yeah, sure. No problem. Beat somebody over the head with that. Right. Always A helmet too? Take that shit off Miles Garrett, somebody? Come on. (laughs) Those Raiders fans with like spiky shoulder pads. Just, yeah, let them in. (laughs) You got a knife? No. This guy with 15 knives on his shoulders? (laughs) You're good. Front row? Get in here. He definitely won't tackle anybody who is wearing the opponent's jersey. It's all good. Face paint looks like he's going to kill somebody. <laughs> You're good. 
Uh. Wait, wait, man, wait a second, ma'am. Your bag's too big. It's a two inches wider than it's supposed to be. You got to, you got to run that back to the car. <laughs> Guy that looks like a serial My killer. <laughs> Come on, keep it moving. <laughs> keep it moving. <laughs> You're good, babe. Hey, can't wait to see you again next week. No, ma'am, you can't bring the diaper bag in here to feed your child. No, nope, sorry. Nope, 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 nope. Just, no outside food or drink. <laughs> you with the uh, spiky helmet. Is that a Dr. Pepper? The- you're going to you're gonna have to drink that right here. <laughs> can't bring it in. <laughs> machete, machete guy in the back. Come on. Let's get you. Let's get you a shot on CBS, guy. Come on. <laughs> no sense. <laughs> Uh, all right. Uh, from Zach, <laughs> machete guy. <laughs> uh, subject line: Maurice Jones Drew. Thank you. This is a long one here. Uh, Who's tackling him? For, <clears throat> first time emailer, long time listener, big fan of the show. Thanks, man. I had the pleasure of seeing Benny and Raleigh a couple weeks ago. Yeah, We're absolutely crushed. And brought my wife along, who had a blast. Sweet. From the moment I entered that comedy club, I was dying as Ben saw me and gave me a shout out due to the fact that I was repping a jersey, Maurice Jones Drew, which promoted me to yell across the room, Clubhouse, with Ben responding, not a sports podcast. (laughs) Easily the highlight of my week. (laughs) Me too. Joey, get down here soon. And Ben, looking forward to the next. That's all. What? what, So was it a white old Jaguars? What was it? Do you remember? Yeah, I remember. I, this is the only thing I remember. It was a black Maurice Jones Drew with the uh, NFL equipment, white, right there. You know what I mean? Mm, yep. Um, Hell yeah. Like the Jaguars uniforms before they changed and became like kind of not the Jaguars anymore. You know what I mean? Did it have the Jaguar on the arms? Yeah, the, the long one. You know what I'm saying? I know. I know. Dude, full big logos on sleeves. Let's go. What are we doing? They're making a comeback. They're making a they comeback. They are. Yeah. Yes. But uh, uh yeah, dude, I just I just got- like peeked into the the like where all this like the showroom or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And I saw a homie like just wearing a Marie's Jones shirt. And I was like, yo. And he saw me, he goes, Clubhouse. I got not sports podcast. And I was just all we said, and I don't know. It was just he was perfect, like a perfect, perfect. dude in the front row. That's awesome. I've uh, thought about that guy. He says my qu- every day since the show. He says my question is: Did you guys ever experience freshman beatdowns by upperclassmen in high school football? To break it down, before practice, we'd all be gearing up on the practice field, adjusting pads, tossing the football, warming up before coaches were around. While this was all going on, the upper class one would all start a clap, chanting "freshman beat down" on repeat. Then, out of nowhere, an upper class one player would come charging down an innocent freshman like a hawk. Helmet, gear, and shoes would go flying, and all that was left was a cloud of dust and a poor pancake freshman on the ground. As a victim of this activity, I can honestly say it was hilarious. At the same time, one of the most nerve-wracking things to go through a freshman each week. Unfortunately, this infamous and famous tradition was put to a halt my sophomore year as an underclassman. I got pretty banged up from the whole ordeal. No shit. <laughs> So I was unable to experience it as a senior. Slap my ass with a Jeff Blake towel while I chug a pumpkin spice latte as I hide from my wife playing NCAA football 25 with the quote, does the station know about this? Stuck in my head on repeat. God, Keep up the great work, fellas. Bro gets it. What an email. Bro gets it. What an email. That's awesome. Thanks, Zach. Keep emailing back. (laughs) Um, No, no. We really, I mean we didn't have anything like that. It was kind of just like your typical, you just had that like fear, that nervousness. You never knew when someone was going to come, but like Ben was a senior when I was a freshman and we definitely didn't have any of that. I was kind of like, we got other things to worry about. (laughs) I was like, dude, we got to like, we got to get ready for, to play this team. I was like, fuck the freshmen, bro. Like let them do their own thing. I think we kind of were the first like seniors to be like i don't even know like we didn't even th- that didn't cross my mind one time yeah you guys kind of embraced us in a weird way but also like you never <laughs> for us it wasn't like we were gonna get tackled like that for us it was just like well drew Exley and joe king are gonna roast our ass in front of everybody yeah 
I, I thought you guys were cool. <laughs> I was like, they're going to be good, bro. That team's going to be good. Yeah. I was like, I don't want to, I don't want to mess with them. <laughs> ben actually did, did, uh, yeah, looked out for us, but there was like a handful, like I just mentioned, like, uh, an actually a joking, uh, <laughs> Merrill, yeah. When you get like the the group of like four or five, oh, like, you're in you trouble, walk, bro. You're in you trouble. walk past them in the block house or like in school or on the field, see so, yeah, everything about your life is getting eviscerated. Oh, four seniors walking by a freshman, not good, not good. <laughs> so scary. T- turn, take a left into the bathroom and chill in there for like three minutes. So they walk and they. Go. <laughs> yeah. Or when you're a freshman, you walk into a bathroom with like four seniors. Yikes! Turn Bro, around and go back. It's so scary. I'm like, God damn! This is like a movie. Like, just let me turn be. around and go back, bro. <laughs> Dude, I remember the first day of school and I was a freshman. Oh my god, bro! It was it was literally like a movie, a Disney Channel original movie. I was like kind of late. I was probably like one minute late. Didn't know my locker combination. Dude, Jake Kolasek comes up to me. He goes, "What's up, freshman?" And just keeps walking. I was like, I was like really sweaty. I didn't know where my first class was. I was like, is this just fucking high school? Like this sucks. Me- meanwhile, you've known him like your whole life. And like the week before, he was probably like, Blitz, what's up, man? It's going to be a good time. First day, smacks books down. Freshman, what's up, freshman <laughs> pussy? I was like, dude, we just like, we were friends like two hours ago. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think. I had like Channel One with a bunch of those guys too. Oh, channel so One, so like I always tried to, I always tried to beat them in there, and then would never move, would never get up to blow my nose to ask if I could use the restroom because as soon as you did, if you walked in after they were already in the back corner of the classroom, see ya. If you got up to use to ask if you could use the restroom, chirp the whole time. I was just like, I'm beating them there. I'm sitting in my seat. And I'm minding my own business. Start getting a little too comfortable, like halfway through the year, start getting a little confidence, you know? Right. Try to throw a little joke in there. And hey, like, yeah, what uh, about the get roasted? Yep. You're like, all right, back to <laughs> back to the first day. I think I said four words my freshman year in high school. Yeah, it's probably called for. So scared. Uh, let's go to Austin here. The subject line is Michael Vick toy football. <laughs> um. Sup, Benny and Joey? First time emailer, but day one clubhouse. Love the show. Thanks, dude. Attended Joey's ship in Minneapolis in a college station or a college Deion Sanders jersey. Got to mention TG93. Yeah, Austin. All right. I, I remember you. Black well. FSU. Uh, black FSU. And it was crazy because it was one of like the modern ones. Crazy. So when I saw two, I was like, who is that? And then he just turned around and his Sanders was like, oh my God. Yeah. Anyways, now the fall is almost over. I can't wait for the Molinar minute to return. Speaking of football season, for my money, the two best nostalgic footballs were the Nerf ball that whistled midair and the Michael Vick toy football you could draw plays on. How crazy was that? Speaking of Michael Vick, how shocking to the sports world was his dogfighting scandal? <laughs> For me, it was up there with Vikings Love Boat, Aaron Hernandez drama, Andrew Luck retirement, <laughs> Aaron Hernandez murder, <laughs> trauma. It's one way to put it. What other scandals or newsworthy events come to mind in the sports world? Slap my ass as I cry like a baby after the Vikings finally draft what looks like a franchise QB and he tears up his knee in a first preseason game. Or like I caught two passes for 14 yards against Old Dominion in 2010. <laughs> you choose. Uh, two for 14. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah. Dude, I thought he was talking about him. I almost scored, bro. I almost scored. Chill. 2011 saw team in six games mostly on special teams hell yeah dude Um, tackled on the one my dad yelled at me (laughs) (laughs) yeah the michael vick football he attached a picture of it as well i don't know if you remember that or not. i don't at all i don't yeah and i don't really remember it either i remember kind of types like this i don't remember it being like a michael vick special but yeah the fact that you could like it's super you were like oh this is the future the future um, dude, there was yeah. I just remember the Michael. I just remember the Michael Vick dogfighting thing. I was just like Jeremy Shap and Bob Lee were always on TV, and it was like constant. It was just like constant outside the lines. Like ESPN, God, I hate outside the lines. Oh my god! And it was just 
it was just outside the lines and like legal experts and Jeremy Shep. And I was like, I just always seen like Michael Vick walk out of a, out of a building in a, in a suit. I was like, what is going on, man? I, this sucks. I hate I just outside the line. It's such a Sunday show. I cannot, when I outside the lines would come off, uh, come on, I'd be like, Oh, dude, it literally ruined my day. But yeah, it's all right. I just, I just thought of the, the theme song music for that. And it just, Gave me PTSD. Oh, I did too. Ding, Every ding, time Jeremy Shap comes on, um, the worst. You're just like, ah, oh, now I'm gonna be sad or boring and or both. God damn, man, I hated that. I I've got some. <laughs> uh, this football, this football, iconic for me. We probably bought seven of these, and I probably like what was four of them. What was its calling card? Like, what what was the special thing there? Uh, you could like squeeze it. Uh, I think it was cool because it was all black. Like uh, the ring around it w- was glow in the dark. It was called the Black Bomb. It was just fun to play. It was way more fun. Like if I was trying to throw the football with one of my sisters, they would like it wouldn't be fun if we used a regular football. But if we used yeah. like that, it was like, oh yeah, let's play. You know, it's just like, sure. It's like one you want to bring to the beach. You know, you could wing that thing. Uh, Vortex with a little pop out thing. Press a button. Yeah. <laughs> That, yeah, was, that cool. was sick. There's one and more. And it also it also would whistle and it would go a country mile. Uh-huh. But the best vortex ball was just the one that was like the OG. Just like the yeah. you know, it didn't have any special effects. It was just like that one that was like 14 bucks at Walmart. It's just like the just straight up. Is it that one that you like want to take a bite out of? You could of yeah. It was like man, like just <laughs> holding it, you're like, dude, I could just throw this forever. And you kind of could. Um, everybody was Josh Allen with that fucker, dude. I just remember taking out my neighbor's like fence with it. My neighbor had a wooden like popsicle stick ass fence, bro. So many pieces of that fence, because <laughs> <laughs> I would draw back and just pretend I was Mark Brunell and just be like, <clears throat> Mark Brunell, <laughs> Mark Brunell, kind of sick on the Jags, Keenan McCardell, Jimmy Smith. Not sports podcast. Saul Saul Mark Brunell at Prime Forty Seven uh, during the combine is top eight moment of my life. I would have given him um, a hug. I think I did. Uh, all right, from Ollivander. I don't remember seeing this name, so I think it's the first time we're here as well. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed your summer. Bring on the football season! Hell yeah. When you guys were in high school or college, what was your pregame ritual before games? A certain hype song or something else? Listening to Boom by P.O.D. was big when I was in school. So many guys would listen to that song and picture themselves hitting somebody super hard in football and feeling very big or picturing themselves scoring a t- winning touchdown in front of a big crowd and would get that tingly feeling while listening to the music. Curious what you guys did. Slap my ass and listen to the announcer scream, He's doing the gritty! <laughs> Thanks, Ollivander. Uh, cool name, by the way. Don't see that pop up very much. Uh, songs that were big. My senior year, that sale, that song was big. <laughs> like the beat of it. So like pregame, we'd be playing like in the stadium. And like, I think maybe the locker room a little bit. We had such tight restrictions. You couldn't, I everything know. had to be edited. You couldn't, you know, so you're pretty limited on like what you could really like bang before. And yeah. I didn't have like good headphones back then. I just had like shitty. Me too. I don't know Apple if I even that came had in. any. Yeah. It was all so messed up. And you got to listen to like the blockhouse music and you're like, who's in charge of that? You know, like, right. It's so hard to get that together. Like we didn't have like the aux cord. I don't think. I think we just literally had a CD player. Waka Flocka was big. We had an aux cord by the time it got to me, but Waka Flocka was big. Um, I remember the pregame shit for me kind of started like the night before almost. Like I remember the night before you finished with your Thursday practice and all the shit that I had to go through for the walkthrough and all the, you know, P's and Q's shit even afterwards. And then like our position group would go uh to a restaurant and we just hold it down for like three hours it was like we get done with practice at like six something get out of the blockhouse area by like seven go to like mcdonald's right by the school and just like sit in there outside and like 
chew tobacco and just kind of like bullshit for like two hours. So dumb. <laughs> so stupid. Um, yeah, but it was so fun. It was like, oh shit, kind of got the right mindset going for the day for the game. Other than that, game day, it was just kind of a fucking hodgepodge. I didn't really have like a regular ass shit thing that I did. I didn't either. I was just trying to make sure I wasn't going to like cramp up pretty much. That was like all I was thinking about on game days, especially early in the year. I was like, okay, I got to drink like 14 bathtubs of water. It was such an annoying thing. Um, I didn't really have anything special that I did though. Yeah. Had to stay hydrated, had to like conserve as much energy as possible because for some reason our position position coach, rest in peace, put us through an entire game before we actually played the game. That was actually insane. So was like, Same was guy. Like, right, well, I, I got that I got that that I gotta do twenty minutes before kickoff, so I gotta make sure I'm really uh conserving a lot here. I would never try and they would get so mad at me. I did it in college too. Before the game when we're like going through stuff, I was like, I'm not trying. Like, let me like be loose and like have <laughs> Dude, they would all I'd always get yelled at and then I'd be like, OK, well, I'm not getting the ball thrown to me at all this game because I just got screamed at by the coach before the game because I was like trying to have fun. Like there's music playing like I, for the music thing. I think it could be kind of any song like it could, I could get down with any song before a game. It could be like the weirdest country song and I'd be like hyped to it just because it's like before a game. Yeah. It's the environment. Yeah, dude. You know, Fuck, yeah. People walk in the stadium. Stadium's like picking up. PA's coming on. Lights are on. Uh-oh. Not a reminiscent podcast. All good. <laughs> uh, I've gone pretty long. I'd say that's it. Uh, again, like I say every week, just because we don't get to your email that week doesn't mean we won't. We stockpile them. We'll get to them. Keep sending them. Team these guys at gmail.com. And we love it. So... Any other tickets that you want to push? Austin, October 3rd. And then we've got San Diego. Oh, my God. Jesus Christ. San Diego, November 7th. Um, Hold on just a sec. BennyPolizzi.com for all tickies. Buffalo. We had a Buffalo uh, burpee girl on the pod earlier. November 14th. Mm. I'll be there. Get your tickies. BennyPolizzi.com. Come where you're come where you're the dumbest jersey you have. Please. Take care. Take care of them, Buffalo, like you took care of me. Um, cool. All right. Well, all those things we told you at the beginning. Subscribe, the comment, the football players, the red, 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 station know about this, all that. Yeah, keep it coming. And uh we'll talk to you next week. All right, Marcus Trufant. Mark Bruner. <laughs> <laughs> How many times did I throw out to him? Is that legal? These guys.